Hi, I'm Dr. Marty Klein with another video quickie. You know, here's a story. It's a few years old, but it sounds like it happened this morning. And stuff like this still is happening every single day. New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art, world famous, right? They're displaying a painting that some people don't like. In fact, 10,000 people have signed a petition to do something about this damn picture. It's a 1938 painting, it's called Teresa Dreaming, and it's by the Polish-French artist Baltus. It shows a 12-year-old girl relaxing in a simple, rustic room, eyes closed, looking away from us. One leg is propped up higher than the other in a very common, comfortable posture. And because she's wearing a long, peasant-style skirt, the viewer can see her white cotton underpants between her thighs. Now, as a consumer, I'm not a big fan of painting. I prefer Bach to Da Vinci. I prefer Shakespeare to Van Gogh. And I prefer Hepburn to Warhol. But I know the demonization of art when I see it. That demonization is almost always about sex and frequently about protecting the children. Activist Mia Merrill's complaint is a familiar one, tarted up with today's politics. Her petition says the painting is undeniably romanticizing the sexualization of a child. If you're part of a Me Too movement or ever think about the implications of art on life, please support this petition effort. She's shocked to see the painting depicting a young girl in a sexually suggestive pose. She notes that given the current climate around sexual assault and allegations, in showcasing this work for the masses without providing any type of clarification, the Met, she says, is maybe unintentionally supporting voyeurism and the objectification of children. Merrill says she doesn't demand that the painting be destroyed. Well, that's so tolerant, thank you. She just wants it removed from view or paired with editorial comment. She'd be satisfied if the Met included a message as brief as some viewers find this piece offensive or disturbing, given Baltus's artistic infatuation with young girls. So, to summarize, the picture needs clarification. Viewers must be told about the picture rather than being allowed to consume it unaided. And displaying it supports voyeurism it is wrong if art creates the wrong kind of response in viewers. The painting should be removed from view or paired with a message that some viewers find this piece offensive. So consumers shouldn't have the chance to think about it or discuss it with others or coming to their own conclusions about its merit or its meaning or any larger issues. Merrill's worst statement is describing the subject as being in a sexually suggestive pose. Most people would just see a girl on a chair daydreaming next to her cat. Some would see interesting colors, lighting, shadows, textures. But apparently, Meryl is one of those people who sees sex everywhere. Censors always do. Where you or I might see casual affection between two male friends walking down the street, some people see sex and they feel assaulted. Where you might ignore a tampon commercial, those uncomfortable with sex feel assaulted. Where you might be bored with a fart joke on late night TV, they feel assaulted. This is a lot of feeling assaulted. If you're not obsessed with sex, you wouldn't even consider these three things part of a single thread. You might casually observe friendly people and health product and dumb joke. But those people perceive sex plus sex plus sex. And for them, it never stops. People who obsessively construct erotic imagery, which they claim they don't like, they never have a nice day. Like kids in a candy store or at a scary movie, people obsessed with erotic imagery are simply not emotionally equipped to ignore what they see. These people deserve our understanding, but they do not get my sympathy because they deal with their upset in such an aggressive way. They want to cleanse the public sphere of sexuality, and they imagine the public sphere as practically the whole world. It includes Greek statues in City Hall, radio ads for birth control, string bikinis on the beach, vanity license plates, lube in the drugstore. The list is almost endless. 
Most of us want to end violence and exploitation, especially around sexuality. It's difficult to know exactly how to do that. And so sometimes people reach out in odd, unproductive places. Merrill resembles the drunk guy looking for his car keys at midnight under a street light. Is that where he dropped them? No, he dropped them over there in the dark, but the light over here is much better under the street light. I'm tired of, seeing, of some people seeing sex everywhere, feeling threatened and wanting to protect themselves and everyone else by stripping away and dumbing down the world's art, fashion, words, products, and ultimately eroticism itself. I'm also tired of people simplistically claiming that practically everything can lead to sexual violence or the patriarchy or rape culture. In our attempt to be insightful about sexism and clearly act against sexual violence, both, both of our great steps forward, of course, we are speeding toward a Stalinist suspicion of almost everything. Anything connected with gender, beauty, yearning, childhood, playfulness, courtship, pleasure, underwear, and yeah, sexuality itself. We can strip the world of The Wizard of Oz and Philip Roth, the Marx Brothers and Casual Fridays, Taylor Swift, Janis Joplin, Princess Leia and Princess Diana, but the world would be a far poorer place than it is right now. And more importantly, it would be no safer. I'm Dr. Marty Klein. Thanks for joining me. And if you like today's video quickie, well, you can subscribe by using the red button right at the bottom of your screen. Thanks for joining me.